it's hellbent day so this is the start to my hellbent vlog my the stolen air vlog flopped but that's okay because i don't do them for views honestly i have so much fun doing these like anticipated releases videos i don't know it's just like it gives me time to digest the book a little bit slower because I would literally listen to the like I would literally lay here and listen to the audiobook all fucking day long. But it gives me time to really think, digest, pause, and really think about how I feel in that moment. And also these are just so fun to look back on because I rewatch my videos all the time. Like I go back to my other Miana Reads account and now I'll rewatch my videos. This is just like, I don't know, this is something that I wish I did for Ninth House. But when I read Ninth House, I did not think I was gonna, I did not think I was gonna like Ninth House. This was actually one of my first few books into adult fantasy. And this is a book, Ninth House is a book that I recommend to anybody who wants to start reading adult fantasy for the first time. Because it's, it's like set in college still. So it's not like too adult. And I just feel like it's just such a good book to get you into that genre. Because I read Ninth House and then I have not stopped reading adult fantasy sense and so this is that vlog unfortunately this is going to be spoilers for ninth house because the plot line takes place right after so i might not do spoilers for um hellbent i don't know yet i'll see how the vlog goes we'll see in the title but this is definitely spoilers for ninth house so if you have not read that yet read that first and then come back here um I love these anticipated releases videos because they do better over time. Like not everybody has the time to read a book as soon as it comes out. Not everybody has the time to um, read the book a month when it comes out. Like not everybody, somebody might not even find Ninth House until like next week. Some people might not even want to read Ninth House until the third book is out, which might be three years from now, knowing Lee Bardugo. But let's not get on that. Um, so. I have started the audiobook. Um, I am an hour into the audiobook. The audiobook is 15 hours long, so we are in for a long ride. I don't know if this is going to be up at my usual Thursday time, but we will try. I got this audiobook at like tw like 1 in the morning. I was so geeked, but I didn't start it last night because I wanted to finish the show, the season of the show that I was watching. And, um,. I knew it was going to be up all night, but I low-key should have read it because I was up all night anyways. Um, and then while I'm listening to the audiobook, I'm going to be working on my book sleeve that I'm making. So I'm making one of those tulip book sleeves. And um, yeah, this is what I'm going to be working on for most of the part, for majority of this audiobook. And um, I might try to make one like a book sleeve for longer books because this is for paperbacks i don't have hellbent i pre-ordered it but i just don't have enough money for it unfortunately so i don't have hellbent physically and then what pisses me off the most is i accidentally ordered two copies of the stolen air and i'm like the money that i spent on the stolen air literally could have went towards hellbent but i digress whatever so yeah I'm very excited for this. Lee Bardugo like did like a Instagram live story where she talked about it, and um, I just I'm just so excited to see Darlington. You know my husband, my my boyfriend, my everything. I'm just I just so excited to see him and excited to see him and what hell has done to him. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna get back to reading. And then I'll update you when I have thoughts because so far I just got to the part where they're deciding that they're going to hell. Alex has been trying to get to hell but now they're like no. Today's that fucking day. And I'm just so fucking. <laughs> I'm just so ex excited. Like this is the best day of my life. I think I'm more excited for a hellbent than I was for the stolen air. Which is unfortunate. But I think it's also because the stolen air was like YA. And that genre just has not been doing it for me. Whereas this is adult and it's just like, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just excited. Hey, hello, hello. I am back. I am now 30%. Hmm. 
I'm not that far. I'm 20% into the book. I am three hours in. I took a shower. I ate. So I did take a little bit of a break from the book. Just because, I don't know, like, I will literally sit, lay here and listen to an audiobook all day long. And I just want to get out of that habit and, like, move around a lot more. Because I literally will lay in a bed like the grandpa from Charlie and the Charlie Factory. Like, I literally will. So, I'm 20% into the book. Um, we're going to talk about... I guess we're gonna I mean I don't I don't even know if you consider it spoilers or not because like we all know what's gonna happen in a book but yeah so Darlington is back from hell I kind of expected their trip to hell to be a lot more a trip to hell they kind of just summoned his ass honestly um and I'm not like I'm not having fun um I don't hate it I'm just a little bored like I loved it I love Darlington I love Alex but it's just like nothing has really happened but like i said it's only 20 percent. who knows what will happen i have such high hopes this is one of my anticipated releases and it's like i mean it's not like last year where i hated everything i read and stuff like that but it's like it feels like everything i'm reading is gonna be four stars like all my anticipated releases and i just want something but i'm like we haven't even gotten to the meat of the book we haven't even gotten anywhere in the book we've just gotten Darlington naked in the middle of a circle summoned like a, he's half demon half like well he's not like half demon but he's like a demon and he's Darlington and it's like I don't know the writing is beautiful there is stuff happening but there's like no plot and like the more I be read books without a plot the more like mm, bored and mad I become you know so I just really hope that like something really kicks off soon like in like the next like 10 to 20 percent so by like 30 or 40 percent like we're really into stuff but i just don't feel like i like i don't think that lee bardugo will write a 500 page book about absolutely fucking nothing so i'm literally barely even into the book like i'm literally only three hours in but it's just like i'm just a little nervous and i'm worried especially with how last year went but other than that i like the characters are written well they still feel like the same characters um the furthering of like alex and her powers is actually very interesting i will say that so it's not like i'm like all the way bored like oh my gosh it's so fucking boring like there is interesting things happening but yeah so that's it for this clip i'm gonna go back to reading because i took like an hour off and now I'm about to read and crochet. Hopefully I don't fall asleep because I just got out the shower. And whenever I get out the shower, I'm immediately sleepy. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. Everyone else is usually like energized and all this stuff. The steam, steam makes me sleepy. And I take really hot showers. Steam makes me really fucking sleepy. So let's hope I don't take a nap. I might. Who knows? I'm going to do a little reading and find out. Sorry, this is a spoiler. There's no way you can do a sequel to a book and it not be a spoiler. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Um... I'm literally 38% into the book okay so you happen to be watching this while you're reading it you're 38 you're not 38% of the book get on um what the fuck vampires vampires no she got me good because I'm sitting here minding my business, you know, crocheting, you know, crocheting, listening to the audiobook, and it, she's talking to this guy. He's like, she's like, oh, nice vase. She about to knock it over because, you know, she's doing something. And he's like, yeah, I got it in like 1936. And I was like, okay, this is an old ass man. Then she go to swing on him. He grabs her and bites her neck. I said, vampires? Bitch, oh, leave our Dugo. <laughs> Five stars. Because it's just something about a paranormal world that just does something for me. It just like she's expanding this world because it's like a fucking course there's not just people who can see ghosts and ghosts and half demons, bitch. There Darlington is a half demon and you're like shook by vampires. Be so fucking for real right now be so fucking real. and it's crazy because i'm like oh i'm about to like listen to a little bit more and take a nap fully awake right now fully fucking awake and fully invested and like this is where shit is kicking in at like yes like i mean things were good before things were oh god fucking damn things were good before 
But I was just kind of like, where is the story? Where is the plot? And now I'm getting it. Also, Alex, I just love her so much. Like, she's just that girl. Like, I was just worried. Because, like, she doesn't, she doesn't have much of a personality. But she does. She has a backstory. But she doesn't have, like, a personality. She doesn't. But then again, she does. That's kind of like her personality. She doesn't have a personality. Like, she feels lost in this world. And that's kind of like the point. And so, like, in the first book, I'm like, well, I like her as a character. I love her. But I'm like, she's all, god fucking damn bit. <coughs> all time favorite like, Lee Bardugo is just so good. Like, her pen does not miss. And I'm so sorry that I doubted her. Because I was like, maybe Ninth House was just a one hit wonder. I was like, even when I read Ninth House, I had to read it three times because I felt like I was tricked. I'm not crying for real. I'm an act, I'm an actor. But when I was reading Ninth House, I was like, I was like, maybe, maybe I'm lying. Maybe I, maybe this isn't my favorite book of all time. So I read it again. I said, maybe I'm wrong. So I read it again. Then I said, no, I'm right. Then I read, then I was reading Help It and I'm like, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I should have read it four more times to make sure like this is really an all time favorite book. No, Lee Bardugo knows what the fuck she's doing. Oh my God. <sighs> If I'm acting like this 38% in, I'm gonna be crying by the last by the last 75%. Yeah. Yeah. Fully invested. Um I have nine hours left. So I listen to this on 2.5 speed. I'm listening to this on I must know no, I'm listening to this on two speed. I'm listening to this on two times speed. Because I wanna take my time and enjoy this book. Never said that before never said that before like i love enjoying my books but i be trying to finish them i be like oh like i don't know it's not that like i want to finish a book because i want to hurry and be done with it but it's just like i want to get to the end like that's my favorite part about reading is getting to the end getting to the finish line it's like i want to know what happens in the end and it's like i enjoy my story there but i just want to get to the end so badly but with this book i'm enjoying every single step of the way okay um <laughs> I'm having to tell my fucking life, bitch. Okay, so I am 63% into the book. I have um, six hours left, like six hours in a minute. So let's just say five hours left, which is like two and a half hours. So normally I would be done by 1 a.m. But I'm so fucking tired. I don't know why. Maybe because I only got a few hours of sleep. I went to bed at like 8 a.m. And I woke up at 1 p.m. Which like isn't a normal amount of sleep. So I'm going to take a nap. I mean technically it would be a normal person would be going to bed right now. But the way that my body works um, I'm probably going to be up at like 1 or whatever. And then I'm going to be up all night. But whatever I digress. Um, ideally I would sleep through the night. Like, I would just sleep until, like, what, like, 7 a.m. or something. But that's just not how my body works. Um, so, yeah. But I am 63% into the book. I was going to update at 50%, but I forgot. And then, by the time that I did remember, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. They had gotten to hell. Because they were bringing in hell to save Darlington. They got to hell. And then... I got confused but then they got me back they got me back I got back um so when they got to hell they all basically end up like you end up going through like every single person's like um shitty basically fucked up most fucked up thing they've ever done um which makes a lot of sense for hell and so you went through every single person but I didn't understand what was going on I'm like what the fuck but then um yeah we got to that point and then I did understand so I'm glad that was explained because I would have never got it or else which I kind of had a feeling that was going on but I also was still confused. So they went to hell, didn't get Darlington back. And now she's dealing with a lot of repercussions. Like she got kicked out of Lethe. She lost her scholarship. She doesn't know how she's going to stay in college. She's basically like planning her life out. She's like, all right, well, not at that. And I'm kind of questioning. I'm like, sorry, I did a tweet earlier and I was trying to guess their zodiac signs, like their sun, moon, and rising. And I said, I gave Alex off fire signs and at first I was going to say she kind of reminds me of a Virgo moon 
but I was like no but she kind of is because she plans ahead a lot like she's like okay well since that ain't working out then how I'm gonna get my my shit together so we I'm gonna just move to LA I'm gonna get me a regular job I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that like I don't know she thinks so far ahead at the same time like she doesn't give that kind of person but she's always she's always think she always has a plan b basically um sorry if you hear yelling my brother's playing video games so yeah that's the part i'm at is like she's thinking she's about to get kicked out um what i'm assuming is about to happen is they about to she about to go to her friend group and she's about to be like they about to be like let's go back and get darlington because we did not get him the first time and so that's what's going on um i'm gonna go take me a nap and i will come back refreshed and rejuvenated i might not who knows i didn't try to i I've been like, oh, I'm about to take me a nap three fucking times today. And every time the book just gets really good. So I'm like, Ugh, I'm up. Or I'm crocheting. And I'm like, oh, well, I made it so far. Um, this is what I have right now. Hey, bitch. This is what I have right now. Um, I just need to do... Uh, this is my last row I need to do and then I'm like done with this half and then I need to go to the back half and do that because yeah um I kind of fucked up the sides a little bit so like the sides are a little bit longer than what they need to be so I don't know how I'm really gonna sew that together I also have a lot of in clip pieces which I ain't gonna hold you up I'm about to sew this bitch together hide these little pieces on the inside and call it a day so tired so i'm gonna go take me a nap slash go to bed and i'll have that y'all when i have some fucking energy my i literally had to come on camera because i started crying and i was like literally a few weeks ago i was like hey guys like what's a book that made you cry because like i don't cry when i read books and i just feel so heartless and then i'm reading ninth house i'm reading hellbent and i'm literally crying mind you i did not cry like i don't really think of like ninth house truly as like my all-time favorite trilogy because it's not like done yet so like my all-time favorite series is the folk of the air because it's done and i loved all books like completely and so with reading this book i'm like oh it's not like my favorite because it's not done yet like i don't know how it's gonna end i didn't cry when i read the folk of the air I am full blown crying while listening to Ninth House. And it's not even like something sad happened. It's that Lee Bardugo's words is so fucking beautiful. I lost it. I, I completely freaking. I completely freaking lost it. And Lee Bardugo, why would you do this to me? You're going to hell. You are going to hell for doing this to me like her the way like her words are so beautiful and like the way that she writes like romance or, or friendship or whatever Alex and Darlington is is so fucking beautiful like somebody needs to take her damn pen away from her and if I have to wait longer than a year for this third book I'm gonna have a heist of my own and I'm gonna be in Lee Bardugo's house and I'm going to get that manuscript for Alex Stern 3 because I don't deserve this. And it's so crazy because when I was reading it, I was like, that feels like something's missing. Like, I'm like, this feels like a four star read. And the book is, I'm not done with the book yet. So, of course, like, I don't really know what I'm going to rate it. And it's like, the more I'm like waiting, the more stuff starts to click. And there's like a plot twist that I was not expecting at like 80%. So, I wasn't expecting that. And then this one scene hits me even though this is a spoiler vlog like i'm sorry i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you what happened i'm sorry um so like i don't even know what i'm gonna title this video like maybe i'll title like kind of spoilers but not really because i'm not really spoiling like i'm not gonna tell you what the plot twist was like i'm sorry um and then like right after the plot twist there's just like, or a reveal. It's not really a plot twist. It's a reveal and a plot twist. So right after that happens, there's a, there's like something that traumatic that happens. And it's just like. <laughs> I'm like crying and laughing.
laughing at the same time because I've literally never felt this emotional with reading a book before. Like, I think the only other book I felt this emotion for was like the gilded wolves and that was because a character i was like attached to like that where it's like i'm genuinely crying out of like happiness and like how beautiful lee bardugo's words are like that is one son of a bitch and i hope she's having a great day wherever she is because why would you do this to me i feel like a loser like what loser like cries in front of a camera over a book like if someone were walking in my room right now i would be so embarrassed because it's not like i'm not i don't know how much to re, re well, i don't know how much to reiterate this but i'm not crying because something sad happened i'm genuinely crying because of like how much I love these characters and how amazing these characters are and how strong Alex is and the connection between Darlington and Alex. It, it was literally like something was happening with Alex and this like demon was like, you know, like you aren't strong. Like, how did you even get here? Like, you're no one. You're no one without, you know, Grace being around you. And Alex is like, you're right like I am no one like I don't know and then she's like she's like thinking that to herself and then she was like thinking about Darlington and how he's like gotten her through so much and it was just like such like when she was thinking about Darlington like it was just worded so beautifully and like such a beautiful scene <laughs> like that's crazy like I literally was sitting here thinking like oh this is probably gonna be like a four star read like it's just not like it's not that it wasn't good it just wasn't like I wasn't feeling anything and then it hit me like wow Lee Bardugo you're going to a very special place but you're also going to hell you know what I'm saying um why would you do this okay I finished the Alex and Darlington Diaries and I gave it five out of five stars. I absolutely love the ending which like that's how I know Lee Bardugo is a good writer because usually like the beginning half of books that I read will be really good but like I'll struggle to like want to read the end and like even though I thought I was going to give this book four stars at one point you okay I just read Vita Nostra and like I did not care to like get to the end of that book like it took me so long to read that audio listen to an audiobook because I just didn't care like the book was good but it didn't have any plot it didn't have anything going on in it and like I just didn't care about anything that was happening and it was like an 18 hour audiobook and I'm like fuck that book low-key almost put me to reading slum so when I was reading this I enjoyed every single second of it I made sure I took breaks just so I didn't like burn myself out I guess even though I wasn't going to I just made sure I took breaks because I think it's important I'm learning that it's important to take breaks in audiobooks and not just sit here listen to an audiobook all the way through start another book listen to that like it's good for my mental health at least to take breaks in between audiobooks so I took a break and like I wanted to come back and read it like I took a break from reading Austria I barely even wanted to come back I forced myself I told myself that I could not start um bent hellbent until I I told myself I could not start hellbent until I had finished Vita Nostra so it was just hellbent was just so good like the ending was good there's like this found there's like this found family aspect to it um just like Darlington and his slut era um him just being so down bad for Alex. Alex is such a great character. Like the characters are just written so great and they have so much personality. And like Lee Bardugo knows what the fuck she's doing. I'm gonna need Lee Bardugo to stop writing YA and just only write adult because it just there was a chapter that literally started off with he wanted to fuck. And I was just like referring to Darlington and I was like, this is amazing. Literally the entire book, Darlington was just naked. The entire book there's a scene where he's sitting in like this middle of like the circle ring with his bleep out and erect and I said Lee Bardugo you are never writing another YA book like 
she it's like she's inside of my mind like it's like everything that I wanted that I did not think I was gonna get because I'm like mm, I don't know like you know I just not that I look down on people who write YA but I'm just thinking like she would never really write smut or like these like she didn't write smut but she would never write these kind of same things she said that she doesn't think she'll ever write smut and I'm okay with that because this was close enough he literally said Garland literally said he wants to eat Alex like he was she was his last meal <sighs> and it's like it's not even just like the characters like well you know I'm a character driven person and a plot driven person and the fact that I'm going this insane over the characters and like she's so good that like even the side characters because I'm not gonna lie in the first book I did not give a fuck about the side characters I did not give, care about Dawes I didn't care about Marcy and I didn't care about Turner. I didn't care about any of the side characters. All I cared about was Alex and Darlington. But in this book, she wrote the characters so well that, like, I love all of them. Like, even Trip. I don't even remember if Trip was in the first book or not. I am so sorry. Um, and it was just like. This book was so different than the last, but, like, in the best way. And, like, I'm not even upset she took three years to write this because this was, like, a literal masterpiece. And it's, like, a build up. Like, it's, like, very slow like she's good like slow burn romance but also slow slow burn within plot wise like everything was timed perfectly like they went to hell at the 50 percent mark it got fucked over they had to go back to hell at like the 80 percent mark that got fucked. like it's just like you can very much tell that like she had points that she needed to hit and she hit those as well it's just like i would never question Lee Bardugo again now i'm not saying she needs to take three years to write the last book but I'll never question her again. And now I'm like, when she was saying how like this was originally a 12 book series, but then she condensed it to five and then she condensed it to three. Let's go back to the five we were to go. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can do that. Because this was amazing. And like, this was my first, first of all, this is my first five star read in some days because I didn't take a drink. This was my first five star read in some days. So I haven't read a five star book since I read the Bear Town trilogy and that was like the first two days of the year. And like everything else has been four stars and three stars. And so this is also like the first book in my anticipated releases that's a five star. So it's like I have hope for the rest of this year. Because like last, The Stolen Air was like a four star. Like it wasn't like, mm, honestly, it's not even going to make my top books of the year. Because sometimes I'll put four stars in there. Um, it's not even making that, like it's not a terrible book or anything like that. Like I really enjoyed it. But like Hellbent, I need a copy of Hellbent so bad. I'm going to reread this. <laughs> I'm going to reread these next book, two books. Like you guys are going to see my copy of Hellbent and you're going to be like, you've only had this book for a week. Like it's going to be like so broken apart. I need to annotate so bad. Like I'm going to go insane. And it's like, Lee Bardugo, you are a genius. Like I'm also excited for her historical um adult book that she's writing because like she gets me she gets the kind of romance I like like Darlington having horns I love him Ugh, the ending the last the last sentence was amazing it was beautiful and it was amazing and Lee Bardugo gets me she gets me Darlington being down bad in his slut era Alex also being down bad in her bad bitch era she's never not in that era and it's just like wow I cannot wait to see what book three is about because this book was an absolute fucking serve like Lee Bardugo not only brought the meal to the table but she decided I'm gonna bring the whole feast y'all don't have to bring anything else you guys are gonna be eating like kings tonight and I did and I did and I did it was just amazing I love Alex like she's literally one of my favorite characters like it's really it's really hard for me to love characters in general I don't even have book boyfriends anymore to be honest like I have book boys that I'm like oh he was cute I liked him like yeah he was cute I really I rarely have book boyfriends and then on top of me, that for me to really have book boyfriends and then for me to still love Darlington was just like wow okay I'm not a loser who hates everything everybody else just sucks except for Lee Bardugo um this makes me want to go back and reread her YA books no I'm not gonna do that Cause I'm looking at Shadow and Bone right now. I barely made it through that series, like just barely. Um, but I'm never, never questioning Lee Bardugo and her pen. Um, I'm actually about to go harass her because I need book three. So five stars, loved it, highly recommend it. I'm not gonna spoil anything that happens, and uh, 
yeah, that's it for this video.